Welcome to the DeepMind headquarters in London. Similarly to how DeepMind has developed AIs for Go and Chess, they are now working on an AI for StarCraft II. Today, we're gonna to be joined by a variety of guests. They're gonna help us to understand what DeepMind is doing here with StarCraft II. And we're going to actually be analyzing some replays of the DeepMind agent actually playing StarCraft II games. We are playing on just one map called Catalyst um, that you know used to be in the ladder, so it's a, just a full map. Uh, the game version we're playing is slightly old, is 4.6.2. I believe that's the one that was played at BlizzCon for the finals yep. back in November. That's correct. Uh, and then perhaps the last, not least, detail is we are playing Protoss versus Protoss matchup. I'm pretty excited to, to see this alpha star going up against a pro gamer. First of all, thank you for having me. And it started with an email I saw in my inbox from Tim who was introducing me to the DeepMind team via email and telling me that my feedback would be of interest uh, to the project they're working on. We are going to watch two of TLO's games. These games were picked because they're entertaining and they show something strategically that's interesting. Of course, we don't know what that is yet. TLO is making buildings right at that small choke point, that small ramp. Mm -hmm. This is a tactic that we use in Protoss vs. Protoss to make kind of a wall so that your opponent can't get into your base. But Alpha Star is skipping that altogether. In a regular game, if we are casting this in a normal way, we say that these two adepts of TLO are guaranteed to kill eight, nine workers. And in stock of two terms, that means that you are incredibly far mm -hmm. ahead. If you can pick up that many workers of your opponent early on, you are going to be very far ahead. But look at this, getting backwards, kind of kiting everything with these stalkers, some good juggling going on. That warp prism still <laughs> alive, though very low on health. Yeah, a couple of stalkers are very low on health as well. Nice pick up there on the Oracle. So both air units went down for TLO, but still has an expand. Is still trading out quite hmm. decently, I would say, in the middle of the map. I think this is maybe a moment where you can see that TLO is not a natural Protoss player, because I think the start was good for TLO. Mm -hmm. And I think there was time to be ready for this. Uh, it's still not over, but the army of TLO is very small compared to the army of Alpha Star. Well, <laughs> that is it. The GG is called the good game here from TLO. So I started the match very confidently, um, especially when I saw those probes and the natural. I thought, okay, this is not right. You know, <laughs> something odd is going on here. It's, I thought, too, it was very worried about Cannon Rush. Um, and. I must admit, I feel I should have won that match, but made a lot of mistakes because I'm not used being to being a Protoss player. Mm -hmm. oh, all right, we have loaded into the third game of this five-game series, as this time in the right bottom side of Catalyst. We're looking in the main base of Liquid TLO. This is what we would consider like a, a pretty standard Protoss versus Protoss opening. I actually love this. The adapts going through the middle of the map oh shading. Oh my gosh. That's some pro level play. That was... If you talk about minor things, like if yeah. you don't do this, if you don't let that shade finish up, your adapts will run straight into the forces of your opponent. I love how it went up the ramp. It picked off one probe as quickly as it could. Uh, this shade is not going to accomplish too much. I wonder if TLO cancels that pylon. He does. Oh! <laughs> he actually amazing. waits because it is a pylon and sneaks in right there. Even though the Nexus was later, it's been ahead in workers throughout the majority of this game. Wow, <laughs> these disruptor hits are becoming ridiculous. Yeah. They... TLO lost his entire army to these two disruptors. Uh, well, Alpha Star is pushing up right now again. Just continuous blast here from the disruptors. Oh, oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> Well, that's a way to not be maxed out anymore, then. Yeah, Alpsar blows up a lot of its own units here. The Phoenix is coming in and lifting up so many of the Disruptors that will cancel their shots as they come out. It feels like Alpha Star is going to be able to take this game. Well, I don't know if it keeps blowing up <laughs> uh, its own units. But, I mean, the amount of Disruptors seems like it's a little too much to deal with. But mm -hmm. It's not an optimal composition, but it seems like these numbers don't lie. GG once again. Wow, then. Wow, indeed. I, I'm not a Protoss player, and when I was practicing, most of the humans I played against mm -hmm. played very standard StarCraft, so that was kind of my knowledge base. Going into these games, none of these games looked like any of the games I played on ladder. Mana, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got here? What was this like for you to meet up with DeepMind? 
uh, I think it wasn't a day that uh, uh, Tilo told me that this is going to be a deep mind show match, and then very shortly after a couple of uh, emails exchanged, and I was introduced to to deep mind team. They took a very good care of me, and yeah, I, I arrived in London to to play a couple of matches against the Alpha Star. It is time. Let's go into game number one of Mana against Alpha Star. Liquid Mana is going for the two adapts, like uh, TLO went for in the very first game that we saw as well. And no, <laughs> this is cute. <laughs> All right, talking about proxies. Yes, yes. But normally you would say that the two adapts of Mana should be able to get quite a bit of damage done in the main mm -hmm. base of Alpha Star. Okay, the two adepts get into the main base of Alpha Star, and Alpha Star is actually losing a fair amount of probes so far. Alpha Star does have way more stalkers here than uh, Liquid Mana does, but with those shield batteries and to three. heal them up a little bit, maybe Mana can hold on. Well, this is not over yet. The Immortal pops out, but instantly targeted here by Alpha Star. Wow. Oh my gosh, Alpha Star could have enough units here to actually win this game. Okay, so GG is called, and Alpha Star actually pulls it out. If I would be playing against a human player right there, Nobody's going up that round, <laughs> especially after I scouted the forgate like twice. Yeah. So I was just confirming it. Going into game three, I was like, yep, this is the time that I need to turn it around. Look at this. Alpha Star is for the first time making that wall that we've been talking about. This is yep. the normal standard for human players. You know, you could get a little bit nervous that those Immortals will really punish your Stalker count. That's very uh, dangerous Stalker movement. Mm. Those sentries would have been a tiny bit closer. Alpha Star could have lost a lot of units there. Forceful does go down. The Phoenix is Ooh. trying to get that War Prism. I need something we see in a professional Stalker play very often. Yeah. I feel like this Alpha Star is showing a lot more respect for Force Fields and, and mm -hmm. ramps and movement in general. Well, it comes in, and it, this is the big battle right now. The Phoenix is just lifting very important units, picking some of them off, taking them out of this battle, and Mana actually has to recall what he has left over. Alpha Star's decision-making so far in this game has actually been fantastic, only taking engagements when it knows it can win. This has been a fantastic game from Alpha Star yeah. so far. That, it looks like, you know, the game two looked very strong, but this this game overall, it was like not exactly human play, but a lot of respect, fantastic control on the units, uh, good moves running away, and, and Mana has to GG here. So game two and game three were quite similar. It was uh, a Phoenix, Phoenix uh, control that uh, really carried Alpha Star to the victory in these games. Let's go ahead and get into that game number four out of five here. If you're asking me what is the one big difference that Alpha Star is doing that almost no other professional stock of to play does is the amount of workers that is being produced yes. on one base. You take a look at this mineral line and once again you are technically mining more minerals, you know, up to 24. You like going over 24 is a hundred percent pointless. Mm -hmm. But in general going from you know above 16 there is just very slow progression and we have decided as community that you really don't want to go over 16 too much. Maybe 18 is acceptable yeah, yeah. but normally you don't see 24 workers on one base. Composition-wise, there is absolutely an advantage for mana, but you can also say that the ball is in the corner of Alpha Star. Alpha Star needs to make plays happen, but yeah. if there is one unit in Protoss versus Protoss where you can say you can get value out of them, even yeah. though you've made a lot of them early on, it is in general the Stalker. Now, 29 Stalkers oh don't want to fight this straight up. There is a shield battery, there are immortals, yes. there are stasis traps that will freeze those units, but let's see if there is some potential here. Okay, uh, losing a few of them here and starting to pick off some of the Immortals. Now, a Stasis Ward gets tripped, so that's definitely going to help Mana a little bit. Oh, that was a great pickoff right wow. there and getting the Disruptor as well. Oh my gosh, Alpha Star with the pure Stalker strategy. Mana has made so many Immortals this game, I can't even count how high. And the fact that it has been defeated by literally pure Stalker, the, the unit that the Immortal most counters. It's so surprising. And GG is, is called by Mana there. And I tell you, you put out a wonderful game for Mana. I was very, very disappointed that I lost this game because I thought I have everything that I need yeah. to defend this. Immortals, Oracles with Stasis, Shield Batteries. Decent upgrades, but I, they could have been better. I had only plus one and very, very late charge. But like 80 mortal versus Blink Stalkers? Yeah. Hey, come on. If, if, <laughs> if, if, yeah. We have one more match here tonight. We're going to have an exhibition match. Mana, you're going to play an even newer version. What is different about this agent that he's about to play? Right. So as I'm sure Mana has kind of prepared um, himself to play this one game, uh, we also wanted to prepare something quite special for him. Uh, so... 
one thing that we kind of talked a bit about is the, the lack uh, of a camera, even though there is kind of an implicit camera that looks around and does about 30 screens per minute. Uh, so instead of just carrying on training, what we did is we kind of started an agent from scratch uh, that would learn to utilize the camera explicitly. Let's go into this game, Roddy, and see what what Mana can pull off. Now, again, this is Mana's point of view. It's the same map that we have been on Catalyst. So you see Mana up here. He's going to be the green Protoss. And uh, of course, we already know where uh, Alpha Star is. It's, it's in the bottom right. Mana now has scouted. Uh, he's playing a very standard game at this point. And we see that this this agent of Alpha Star has decided to wall that top of that ramp. Well, overall style-wise, right now, what we've seen from Mana, uh, he's scouting a lot. He has a probe out on the map that he's checking a lot of areas with. The stalkers have been back and forth. Mm -hmm. So Mana's being careful, looking for anything Alpha Star might be doing on his side of the map uh, that that could catch him off guard. Wow, really good decision making here. Actually, sacrifices the Oracle for a couple of centuries. I, I'm getting chills right now. The, like what we're seeing from Alpha Star, this feels so far like the most human-like game that we've seen. Just the oracles coming in, harassing. You know, maybe the the sentry trade wasn't something every pro will do, but overall, very, very good stuff. Yeah, Alpha Star is just playing so smartly and comes back in with double oracle once again, yeah. eliminating quite a few probes. But it, Mana did cancel that Stargate, like you mentioned. Like, he's getting so much scouting intel that he does know what are the right choices for him. If Mana can continually lure Alpha Star back, that's a way that Mana can actually gain an advantage. A lot of Oracle being produced, by the way. I mean, one Stalker being wiped in, in range of these Immortals. Mana's absolutely striking back here. We would use the term outplayed normally. I think in the first six, seven minutes of yes. this game, Mana was getting outplayed mm -hmm. by Alpha Star. At this point, it seems like Mana has created an army that is too much to deal with. Even though there's quite a few Oracles, actually. That is a lot of Oracles. You are right about that. If all of the anti-air units go away, the Oracles actually can clean everything else up. So we should not be counting out Alpha Star yet. It, Alpha Star cannot GG. Alpha Star <laughs> does not decide that it has lost the game and then leave it. And that is that. GG. Uh, it was very stubborn, wasn't it? Like, he didn't, really didn't want to leave. Like, yeah. the game was over for a long time. <laughs> I, I think the nature of StarCraft is that, you know, it's an incredibly rich and, and uh, amazing space of strategies that can be played by both players. And I guess part of that means that, you know, it's um, you have to play extremely well, um, but even the very top players in the world don't win every single game. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's really nice to see actually what happens on the other side of, um, uh, of the table when actually it's possible to reverse it and see how <laughs> what happens when, when Alpha Star actually loses a game. And so it was, I'm just really grateful for you to actually showing us yeah. that side of the yeah. game. Yeah, we want to thank the entire DeepMind team and, of course, Mana and TLO for the games. Uh, don't forget there's going to be a lot of information as well as all of the replays, the archive videos and everything going up on the DeepMind site. And other than that, thank you very much for watching.